pleased to have Jim Shields on as a guest. He's an awesome guy. He wrote a great book, and we'll talk about that in a second. Uh, but Jim is in the build to rent market. Now, Monez was just on. She is a buy and hold person. Jim just says, the hell with it. I'm not looking for properties. I'm just going to build them myself <laughs> and then uh, put renters in there. Yeah. Thanks for coming on the show, Jim. Oh, good to be here, Bill. Thanks for having me. Um, are you building subdivisions? Or are you doing infill with uh, we're, we're doing a mixture of both? We'll do some infill and then some some you know the develop. Uh, obviously, to get a full development approved takes longer. So we'll we'll tag team both some infill lots and then some smaller developments as well. Um, what we like to do is to grab on to the big builders. They they like to jump to the next thing. So sometimes they'll have built a neighborhood and there'll be 30 lots left and they'll just want to move on and we'll grab those. So it's already an existing neighborhood. We'll just grab the remainders. Um, but we do it anything from spot to something like that to a whole development. Um, so it's a little bit of a mixture. Well, I, I tell you, the I think the benefit of having a piece of a subdivision uh, is that you have a bunch of homeowners in there already. And I think that tends to um, help the neighborhoods um, appreciate value uh, because listen people have an attitude when they own their own home and they take a little bit better care of it when it's not theirs yeah uh, that said there's plenty of renters out there that still have pride in ownership even though it is an ownership it just depends on the price point that you're in if they have a family they still want to be in a nice place too I mean, that's why class a apartments uh, have done so well yeah <laughs> i agree right? agree totally um, yeah. and i think this is just my own opinion, but uh, since, since what we've had in the bigger cities and the people just starting to move away, they're still going to want a nice home, whether they're renting or they're owning. Yeah. And I, I think this is going to benefit you greatly. So yeah. What markets are you in? So we started in Jacksonville and then we expanded out to other markets. I, I've always been taught a mentor of mine 22 years ago said, you want to look if, if I, I always wanted to go into growth areas. Uh, and, and coincidentally, without knowing COVID, it was always more low density areas. I wasn't right. in the big, fancier, non cash flow markets. You know, I started in Bakersfield, California, which was a sprawl. You know, Johnny Carson used to make fun of it. Right, right. Uh, but, uh, but it is an area that had population growth, economic growth, affordability, desirability, healthy supply, and demand. And those five things is what I look for. And that's why I went to Jacksonville 16 years ago, started there. And just like you were saying, I want to stay in, I like to build A properties and B neighborhoods. So we're not going to the highest end with the biggest amenities, but solid areas and they're brand new construction. So I consider them A. Um, and we started in Jacksonville. We still build in Jacksonville. But we didn't want to get pushed into marginal areas for building. Because even if you build a new house, we go to a marginal area, I think it's tougher. Right. So we started to expand out to Ocala, out to Palm Coast, down to Southwest Florida, about five different markets down there, and even to Southwest Atlanta, um, because we want those fundamentals. And we don't want to put too much pressure on one market. Excellent. So, um, what, what's your what's your favorite market, or do you have one? <laughs> yeah, that that would be tough to say. I I, I, they, I like them all yeah. because they all have those factors. I, I think Ocala was a surprise market. You know, when my building partner first said, you know, five years ago, hey, we should go out to Ocala. I said, oh, Ocala, isn't there only like 10,000 people out there? And he's like, no. And sure yeah. enough, yeah, <laughs> Marion County has like 400,000 people. There was lots of great growth. It was, it's a, a low density, you know, simple community feel. Right. And, and the, the numbers, not only the rent returns, but the, the values have gone up really nicely. So that's just one surprise market. But all of our Florida markets, I really enjoy. Right. Uh, so part of, uh, we, we've been talking about Jocko Willick's uh, presentation on uh, Tuesday. And you actually got to ask him a question and it had to do with surfing. <laughs> yeah, I wanted to know. See, I'm a surfer because, and no one, you look at Jocko and he's ready to rip your head off. And, yeah. But I knew he was a good surfer. I knew because uh, just listening to different things. And I wanted to know what did Navy SEAL training do for your surfing? And I thought, and his answer was no. What did my surfing do for my Navy SEAL training? So that yeah. was pretty cool. Yeah. Then I got to talk to him. I'm sure, I mean, you and I have had some good chats. And he, anyone who's just saying, I'm throwing in the towel for the next two months because politics is just too much. And, and Jocko had some strong words on that, which I really yeah. appreciate. Yeah, yeah. So, absolutely. I've well, read all by his kids' book with my sons and with my daughter. Yeah, that that was the most interesting 
thing that because I read you know his first book and I didn't really pay much attention to anything else that he had been written or that he had written and then I, I pulled up Amazon all of a sudden I see all these children's books I'm going man I wish I would have asked him what was his motivation behind writing children's books after the you know basically the self-improvement books that he's doing now and the leadership books yeah uh, but by the time I thought of that the line was too long and he didn't have much time all right so what I thought was pretty interesting is uh, the, the temperature of the water when you're surfing now you're in California you were in California growing up surfing the water out there in the Pacific is cold it's cold, but it's not cold, Maine cold. So I didn't know yeah. he was from Maine. So, so, so those boys are crazy. <laughs> Jocko Willick grew up surfing in Maine. And obviously, it was uh, kind of a short window of the surfing. <laughs> well, I don't know. Those boys just go in the winter. They're, and I'm, I'm, he's got that stone like look of just serious. I'm like, well, that's why he surfed Maine all those years. <laughs> uh, that's, that's a tough surfing spot up there. He, he's the guy that you're going to be in fear of coming up out of the water slowly with, yeah. the, with the makeup on, the camouflage makeup. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I wouldn't want to piss Jocko off in the surf. That's all right. Sure. So the other time. <laughs> let's talk about your book. Yeah. Um, I think this is very important because people get really involved in their business. They don't have time for their family and there's only so much time to spend with them. Yeah. What's the name of your book and why did you write it? I wrote the family board meeting because I saw, first of all, we usually write for what we need. And I wanted to make sure it, it, it scared the hell out of me, Bill, coming into real estate early, having some success and getting invited to big events and seeing behind the curtain of some people that I really looked up to who, yeah, their balance sheet was huge, but their family life was in shambles. Yeah. And I said, that doesn't, I don't want that to be me. So I always tried to, uh, to make it a point that I was going to be successful in business and successful with family. That was it. And, and that was my motivation. And 10 years ago, um, the, 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 the catalyst, I guess, for me writing this book was... You know, it was a big time in my life. I was, you know, bringing back my real estate company from year extinction from the 08 meltdown. I was adopting my two oldest sons, uh, and I had just been approved to donate a kidney to my father. So there was just a lot of things coming. And I've never looked at family life the same way. You know, that's why I'm half dressed in this, where it's just coming back from flow riding with the family. And, nice. um, and I just think it's important that there's some teaching out there that says, put your head down, go at it for the next five to 10 years, you'll get back to family, they'll understand. And that's bullshit. That's the worst advice you can ever get. There are things you can set in place to enjoy your family along the way. And, uh, and that's what my simple book is about, is some simple strategies and principles where you can enjoy your family along the way and not feel like a stranger. Because a lot of entrepreneurs, when I get behind the curtain, I've worked with a lot of them, as you know, they almost feel like they're, they're a part-time disciplinarian or just an ATM machine. They don't really have a connection to their family. They don't feel like they're close to them. And, and man, that, that's tragic. Uh, and I don't want to see that happen. And it doesn't have to happen. Not to mention that kids grow up a lot faster than you think. Um, it, it goes by like that. And yeah. you need to be around during their um, formidable years as well. Yes. So, the, and, and if you are, then they'll want to be with you afterwards. You know, yeah. the name of my, my parent education company, my family education company is 18 Summers. Because yeah. a mentor of mine is the one who taught me. And he said, hey, over 80% of the time that most people will ever spend with their children is in those first 18 summers. Right. And then it starts to delineate because of, you know, they're moving away and that. Um, so make the most of those years. And if you do, then you've probably bought yourself more time with them in the future. But you've also, you will never regret that time. And the years are not all created equal. So, you know, with me, I adopted my, my two oldest sons at seven and five. Right. And when I heard that in my head, I was like, wait a minute, I only have 11 summers left. It just seems, it, it really puts a positive motivation on the time that you got in front of you. Excellent. So uh, how, how can people find out about 18 Summers? Yeah, just go to 18summers.com. We're on Instagram at uh, 18 Summers Tribe. You'll get to see some of our family videos, just some simple, powerful techniques. Uh, and, and again, I think people are attracted to us because our big saying is there is no perfect family. It's not about perfection. It's about bridging imperfection, making the most of the time we have, and uh, going from there. So awesome. they can look us up on 18summers.com. All right. Now, if people want to get a hold of you about um, what it is you do in business. Yeah. 
How do they do that? Yeah, they can go to Jack's Wealth Investments, uh, learn about us. Our specialty is, again, in growing, uh, building investment property in high growth areas, like I just explained. We're always looking for that economic growth, population growth, affordability, desirability, and healthy supply and demand. And then we build single family duplexes and quads. So we're sticking to low density. We do a little bit of a, a, um, a combination of that, depending on what people are looking for. Uh, and they can get in touch with us. You met Jennifer. Uh, she's been with me 11 years, our director of sales and, and our building partner. We have, you know, I'm very proud. We've probably built one of the most dynamic build to rent companies in the nation now. And uh, we were doing build to rent before that term build to rent even was around. So kind of proud of that. And I'm assuming you're looking for uh, accredited investors. Uh, do you have a fund? We have a fund. We, if you, we have people that, that, that uh, fall on both sides. We have some people that want to put money into the fund for the, you know, get a nice preferred return up front for the acquisition of the land, the development of the land, that process. And then people want to own a few end properties. Um, so credit investors, obviously, for the fund. Uh, and then just, you know, a paper people for the most part who are, you know, work with a lot of professionals, busy professionals, business owners who are wanting to add a few, you know, high quality properties to the. So portfolio. are you selling any of these turnkey as well or? Are you selling any? Oh, I'm selling. I, I keep turns for myself and I'm my own. But we work with investors nationwide, actually international now, okay. to sell. So we are we're we're a, a turnkey provider for new construction. Okay, excellent, yeah. excellent. I'm sorry, I didn't I didn't realize that off the bat. No, but no, I, I have my I own asked portfolio. Yeah, you no, know, I have my own portfolio. But yeah, that our main thing was I did a ton of uh, foreclosures, renovations, and built my portfolio. That helped other people build portfolio. And, you know and five years ago when all those numbers started to change and it was getting really skinny down in Jacksonville. I just, it was that old dog learning a new trick and my building partner and friend said, I think we should become, start building our own. And that was literally how it, it started to, uh, nice. to come it, to fruition. It, it's amazing sometimes how, how easy the idea just pops into your head. Why aren't we doing this? Yeah. <laughs> Jim, thank you so much. Thanks for having me, Bill. I, I appreciate you having, um, 